Good evening. Today we're looking at Acts and we're in chapter 11 and we're going to finish it off beginning with verse 19. Now, those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. And they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, in coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, also proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. This is a bit different than the way we do it today. And in some ways, that's not a good thing. Back then, and we can see this not just in this one instance, when a church was established, there was communication, there was connection. And it's Jerusalem sending these people out out to these other locations to confirm and support these other congregations. It's not because everybody's reporting back to the church in Jerusalem, but they're getting to know one another. If you read each of the letters, you find that they're being written to a remote congregation, or I guess the one exception, which is also a letter of exhortation, Hebrews. And that's an interesting one because note the word I did read here. The word was Jews, meaning those who were of the Jewish faith. Not all who were in Israel were Jews. They'd lost their faith, many of them had. It was at best, in some cases, a national religion practiced because that's what we do as a nation not because of religious belief. So the distinction being Hebrews isn't written to the Jews. It's written to the Hebrews, the people who know their own history. And in the case of Hebrews, it's also written to those who in knowing that history are now Christians. In this case though, we're talking about a specific region where they were sent to. Whereas in the case of Hebrews, that goes out to a broad part of the population throughout many different nations. That connection in Hebrews... Hebrews was a language too. Right. And then a lot in the car. That connection in Hebrews, that connection that we see here in Acts, is a positive thing. Knowing and having relationship, having the opportunity to encourage, having the opportunity in some cases to correct, not because you're trying to be in control, but if a congregation is newer, they've got less knowledge. Being able to point out to them, hey, I understand that you've seen this other places, but there's a problem with that practice relative to scripture. That's helping. It's not judging and it's not authoritating over. When you've got knowledge that you can assist with, it's a good thing. And in this case, the church in Jerusalem sent out a person, one man, to go to check things out. He found it was good. He found it was great. He goes out and gets another one to come up and help him with the work. And together they stay there working with that congregation for an entire year. It wasn't just sending a letter of, yeah, we know you're there. If you've got any problems, give us a yell. They were investing in this other congregation. They were investing in one another in a sense. I can remember when I was younger, 
And when there'd be a gospel meeting, the congregation would be full. It wasn't full because we succeeded in getting that many visitors. It was full because that many people came from the other congregations. And sometimes they were coming from two, three hours away to support our gospel meeting. And we did the same kind of thing. When we'd hear about a gospel meeting, we'd show up at it. And again, we would travel sometimes hour, two hours to get there. But the important thing wasn't the time spent traveling. The important thing was supporting one another. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen quite as much today as it needs to happen. Because when you've got that kind of support, it's a good feeling. I mean, it helps you to feel like you're not alone. Because in most cases, even though the majority of people in the United States attend congregations that are over 400, the majority of congregations in the United States are under 60. There are lots and lots and lots of little congregations because not everybody can afford to be traveling two to three hours on a Sunday to get to a big congregation. So as a bunch of little congregations, and that's how they're starting out as little, being supportive of them where they're at was really, really important. Let's continue and finish off this chapter. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them was Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world, and this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. So in this particular instance, it's not just that Jerusalem had sent out Barnabas to check out to make sure that the congregation there in Antioch was doing well, but the church in Antioch sends back support for the church in Jerusalem, in Judea. Like I said, it goes both ways. It's not just the one congregation being bigger and more important and having authority over. No. They were doing the right thing. They were being supportive of a younger congregation. That younger congregation grew in maturity and did the right thing when they found out that a severe famine was coming and they looked out for their brothers in an area where the persecution had already begun. Fact is, that's where we started this reading, talking about because of the persecution and the death of Stephen, the people were going out. And based on this, after a year of studying with that congregation, they're sending back support sending back support to a people that are already facing severe persecution. A persecution that's only going to escalate because it only begins with the persecution from the Jews. It continues when it becomes persecution from Rome. We need to recognize it's not just congregations that need that kind of support. And I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about the people interest. We have people within our own congregations that need to be told, hey, I've been thinking about you this week, that need to be told, you're important to me. We all are called to be part of the body of Christ. I'm not comfortable with the idea of not having my left arm. I might be right-handed, but you know what? I'm a hurting puppy if I don't have my left arm. That's a significant part of me I don't want to lose. If we started treating our brothers and sisters within our own congregation like they were our left arm or our right arm or our lungs or our heart, I've named off a lot of things none of us really wants to do without because in some cases we're not functional at all without them. We need to be encouraging one another 
investing in one another the same way we see here in the scripture. Because when we take the time to encourage and invest in a different part of the body, we grow. Just because I exercise and do push-ups doesn't mean the rest of my body isn't benefiting from it. It's my chest that's doing a whole lot of work. It's my arms and my back muscles doing a whole lot of work. But my heart is working. My lungs are working. The circulation increases. It's a good thing for the whole body, even if one part is being focused on primarily. It's a good thing for the whole body when we go and support one another, when there's a singing, when there's a gospel meeting. It's a good thing when we take the time to support one another locally. We have this as an example here. It's an example for us to learn from and apply. And that's the thing we got to remember. Scripture isn't given for us to just read and then come together and attend and hear somebody else talk about what he's read. It's there for us to be applying in our lives daily, to be growing in it, growing in the knowledge, growing in the application and the wisdom we gain from that application. Because when we grow in the knowledge and application, is when we grow as a body. I pray you keep in God's word, and I'm praying you're keeping healthy.